Hi guys, uh, welcome to my video for the full channel. Uh, this is Nani Kaji. Uh, in today's session, I'm going to explain you how to clone Oracle Home using manual method. In my previous session, I explained you how to install Oracle Home using a uh, you know, GUI method and how to create a database on top of that. And then once you create your database, you can uh, you know uh, clone your database. You can clone your Oracle Home. There are different methods. Either you can go with the GUI or you can go with the manual method or uh, you know just a tar and untar and do some configuration changes. And there, there are many ways you can do Oracle Home cloning. But in this today's session, I'm going to explain you how to clone Oracle Home using uh, uh, the simple uh, standard uh, manual method, uh, which is pretty straightforward and uh, you know very helpful for uh, migrating or uh, creating a new uh, test database or development database or UAT and then you know same you can take it to the production so let's get started um, I have made uh, six to seven steps uh, in fact seven steps uh, you know to cover entire this manual method of Oracle home cloning uh, first step is uh, you have to take a tar backup of your Oracle home and then uh, move it to whichever server or whichever location you want to uh, clone that Oracle home and then untar it and then once you do untar and then do some four steps uh, once you do four steps uh, if it is a rack node you can update the cluster nodes if it is a not a rack node you can skip step number four and uh, if it is a exadata you can proceed with the step number five if it is not exadata it's a normal uh, traditional RDBMS you can clip you can skip this step number five and then straight away go to step number six again if it's a rack you can proceed with the step number six if it's a not rack you can just ignore this step number six and then do your final verification and make sure you know oracle cloning is successful let's get started all these steps in practical uh, i already logged into my linux uh, i'll just uh, verify my name yeah I my host name is rack one dot local domain and let me verify the version of the Linux version. Okay, uh, let me verify it in the database is running here. Right now, no database is running, so I'll just start the database. Okay, so database started, database mounted, and database is open. Okay, so let me verify my Oracle home. Oracle home is already set, so we go inside the Oracle home. So as per my prepared document, first tar the current existing home. So I'm going to tar whatever under you for DB home one as a you know tar backup. I am at DB home one, so I will just go back one step. Uh, under eleven two oh four, I'm going to tar my entire DB home one. As a Oracle Home binary BKP tar.gz. So this will take a few few minutes. Let's wait for that. Still in production mode, you can see it is not still running. So you can just go with uh, and just get to my host and then tar whatever you want to tar and you can see it's running. Okay, uh, the the tar backup got completed and this tar error message can be ignored because if the previous Tar backup got failed and then you know that will throw error message after this uh, consecutive tar so you need to fix this error message so that is related to some OS uh, kind error so that that can be fixed later but make sure that your tar backup is successful so you can ignore this error message so my tar backup is ready so it is of 2.3 GB just to verify what is the database for Oracle 
Oracle Home. Oracle Home is 4.4 GB and then the tar backup is of 2.3 GB. Okay, now the tar backup is uh, done. So you need to, uh, as per my note, next step is gonna be, uh, you know, uh, untar that backup uh, to the target location. Target location either may be remote server on the same server or any other server. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do uh, cloning on the same server on the same directory. So if you are going to clone it on the different Oracle uh, home as a different server, so you just copy the star backup to that remote server and then untar over there. So I'm not, I'm going to do it on the same server. So what I'll do, I'm going to create my DB home 2. Okay, DB2 is ready, so I'm just going to insert that. Yeah, so I'll just uh, log in to my different terminal. I can see DB Home 1 and DB Home 2, and I'll log into DB Home 2. Okay, so Antar is going on. I can verify quickly from the other terminal. The DB2 files are coming or not. I can just make a count of that. I cannot differentiate because already all the files are loaded. I can just verify the size of size whether size is increasing or not I'll just do the two well okay so on top of the entire is done so just verify okay 4.4 db2 and 4.3 okay db3 so fine so the antar is successful can see right now error message and proceed further once the entire is done uh, go inside db home 2 and run the actual clone command uh, the clo this third step is the one which is going to do actual clone okay before that i will just uh, show you context.xml file App record product for the inventory. App for the inventory. There's a context.xml file, and here there is an inventory.xml file. This is the main file for all Oracle Home registry component. Everything will be loaded here, everything will be you know, logged here. Now only dbhome one is configured. Once we do dbhome two configuration, the other entry also should come here. Okay, now I'm in third. Uh, I'm inside the dbhome two clone bin directory, and I'm going to run actual uh, the clone command. I'll explain that command. Clone dot is a Perl script. I'm going to run it with Oracle Home dbhome two and oracle home short name this is the short name it's going to update in your uh, registry xml component right and then this is my oracle base i'm just going to run it yeah it started and uh, it will take a uh, few minutes and this is a log file one can see this log file for uh, detail see it's going to relink um you know uh, and uh, you know, all the library linking all the executable relinking everything which will do here 
it is as if like you are installing the newer Home. in my previous video i showed you the same log file when you try to install new oracle home via gui there is a back end a log file similar log file is going to update whatever that log file contains the same content will be in this log file so basically this log file contains all the binary relinking executable outputs all the uh, executable and binaries and library uh, linking everything everything log message will be logged here and if any error message you can refer this log file and then fix it and you know go ahead let's wait for a few more minutes let it get complete you can see this uh, short message here 100 percent clone done and then install process is successful and linking is in progress so it will take few more minutes okay uh, setup is successful okay meantime we will just go back to that document uh, once this actual clone step is completed so four step is basically talks for the rack database if you are having two node three node four node rack so similarly all this step one two three you have to follow it on the uh, all the cluster nodes like if it's a two node rack uh, you have to do it on all two nodes if it's a four node rack you have to do it same process on all four nodes once you do it and then you need to run this uh, you know update node list for example basically update node list is the one you can pass all the cluster nodes node one two three four whatever the cluster node you will going to pass it it is only for a uh, rack uh, database or rack or rack alone so we are going to ignore it because mine is standalone database and if you are working on exa data so step number five is applicable so i precisely mentioned applicable only for oracle home in exa data machine so exa data machine we are going to link oracle home with uh, uh, rds or udp protocol so this is actually uh, the name is same change here right so let me change this one to see 11 to 11 to and then you are linking with RDS protocol or UDP protocol whatever protocol your exata box has you have to link it it's only for exata box and coming to step number six it is again for the rack so you need to run this command and make sure uh, if it's return one it means rack is enabled if it's return zero uh, it's a non-rack so I'm going to run it and I will show you how much is non-rack it should be zero if it's a rack you need to make sure it output should be one and if it is not you have to run this command rack rack on it means basically rack enable let's go back um, okay the cloning is successful and it is asking us to run this root.ss script as a root user i'm going to run it and just log out and i'm at the root now just yeah root script is done i'll go back login back to oracle and uh, i will run this one let's go to oracle home okay so i'll make sure it should be a non-rack just go inside this yeah, now i'll run this rack enabled or not It's a zero it means it's a standalone track is not enabled so we're good we'll go and the verification step is very simple so you have to make sure your patch ls you know take command should run successful if there is any patch it will display if there is no patch it will say zero patch let me run this command okay so to opaque version oui version log file okay this is the local inventory and this is central inventory um in trim patch patch level product okay Oracle level. there are one product installed okay there are one product installed there are no in trim patch so this opaque command successfully executed means your oracle home cloning is successful so if it is giving any error message or warnings you need to try to fix it and then you know until this uh, opac ls unit command returns successfully if there is any patch applied on that previous oracle home 
so all the patch will be comes here and it will be displayed here so the db home one has no patch and here also it says no patch but the command is executed successfully so this is one way of uh, verification other way of verification is so we have to go inside this central inventory and then check for uh, you know uh, the con the context.xml inventory.xml file so that should contain your cloned oracle home details sorry for that so let's go inside the central inventory user and app or inventory sorry for the type of contact at xml and then inventory dot xml so you can see here right earlier only one oracle home was pointing now you can see odb home 2 and then the name whatever you given right 11204db home 2 that name short name will be reflected here so it means your oracle home cloning method is successful so that's it for the today's session guys so thank you so much and please do subscribe my channel and uh, you know share with your friends and colleagues uh, and i'm looking forward the next session on rack oracle home cloning and rack patching and rolling uh, patching non-rolling patching and uh, you know i'll proceed with uh, some performance tuning classes uh, you know planning to go ahead with uh, from basics to uh, rack expert so stay tuned guys thank you